Welcome back to Chicago Independent Television. In November 2014, protests in support of slain Ferguson resident Michael Brown took America by storm. Chicago held a number of events and protests, including a solidarity rally, which we'll see in this. If y'all could join me in a four and a half minute moment of silence for Mike Brown, for all the lives that have been lost. And the reason we do four and a half minutes is because they left his body in the street for four and a half hours after they killed him. And then they put his body in an SUV, not even an ambulance, but a police SUV. And so we, we gonna give that moment of silence to lift up that moment in his life, but also all the lives in which we know that are gone and unfortunately will be gone unless we continue to organize. Most people think that great gods will come from the sky. Come on. Take away everything and make everybody feel high. But if you know what life is worth, you will look for yours on earth now. And now you see the light. There's only one thing that you do. Stand up for your right. Come on. Get up. Stand up. Stand up for your rights. This is a genocide. Get up. Stand up. But he says you can kill a revolutionary, but you can't kill a revolution. We're an organization that's been struggling against this problem of police crimes for the last 40 years in Chicago and throughout the country. We're in solidarity with Ferguson, but this past August, we filed a letter with the Attorney General of the United States, Eric Holder, uh, signed by 67 victims of police crimes and terror and also of torture. And, uh, in that letter, we, uh, we showed and demonstrated where there is a pattern of police brutality and criminality in Chicago that makes Ferguson look like a Sunday picnic. In the uh, last four and a half years, 90 people, have, unarmed people, have been murdered by the police in Chicago. 90% of those people are people of color. Over 70% of them are African Americans. So that looks like a pattern to me. The reason that you see people here is because it's not just Ferguson. Like you'd have a bunch That's of almost money. like saying, well, you know what, the like, LA riots happened in LA. Like Good thing we don't have that problem. Or, you know what, when Dr. King was assassinated, there were only a few cities. Good thing this old place didn't have that problem. Well, the problem has always been the stratification of black males, black females, as the other in a country where we were brought over to serve as work and dehumanize. No justice! No peace! No racist! No police! No justice! I want to lift up Miriam Kaba. If you do not know Miriam Kaba, then, then you don't yeah. know the Lord. Um, <laughs> but, I, but we are not, as she said, we are not indicting a man. We are trying to indict a system. Right. And that's what we out here for. No matter what comes out tonight, no matter what comes out tomorrow, and, and, and no matter what happened with Marissa and the fact that she had to plead a deal with the state right. for protecting herself. Come on. We have this tree with black coffins hanging from it, and throughout the crowd, we've distributed lines of rope that also have coffins hanging from them. If you were to count all those up throughout this space, you'd find 89, because the Chicago police have killed 89 of our brothers and sisters in the past five years. Michigan. Then the protest marched off and took over Lakeshore Drive.
it's important to raise this question in the international uh, arena because the United States has treaty obligations. Uh, it has uh, entered into with the United with the United Nations, and uh, one of those treaty obligations is being violated uh, right now as we speak in Ferguson. You know where the uh, uh, the police have been allowed to quell the right of the people to protest, and have also uh, committed uh, uh, an unjustified act of murder against an unarmed African-American youth. So uh, we believe uh, that these questions should be raised in the international arena, but also we believe that uh, the citizens in our communities need to be empowered to hold the police accountable for the crimes they commit. And so we're also fighting for changes in local laws. Uh, what's, the, what's, the, what's the point in existing in the country if you're not going to fight for a change in that country? our program here in Chicago, CPAC, Civilian Police Accountability Council, where we're saying that the people need to be empowered in the communities to hold the police accountable for the crimes they commit. Until that happens, these things are going to continue. Stand up, stand up. Stand up for your rights. This is a genocide. Get up, stand up.